Before this video begins, I want to give a big shout out to my top tier Patreon supporters, Dow with Soul Weaver and William the Weeb. You guys are legends. If you want to support the channel beyond the much appreciated like and subscription, then head on over to my Patreon via the link in the description below. Now let's get started. So, Sonic Prime's third and final season just released a couple of months ago, and I have some, well, let's just say thoughts. I'll eventually do a video covering the entirety of Prime, but for now, I want to focus on Shadow. Now, anyone that halfway knows me knows that Shadow is my favorite character in the franchise. Everything from his phenomenal arc in Adventure 2, his acceptance of himself regardless of the truth in Heroes, and his willingness to never abandon those he cares and fights for in 06, in tandem with his awesome design and brilliant characterization, especially before the 2010s, are all reasons why this character is so well loved by not only me, but the Sonic community as a whole. All of this to say that there's a lot at stake here, especially when I hear people saying stuff like, well, Prime has one of the best representations of Shadow we've ever gotten. Ever since the very first teaser trailer, I was nothing but excited to see Shadow in this series, and he was set up to play a massive role here, and that was honestly all I wanted. And, well, that didn't quite pan out now, did it? But hey, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the character of Shadow in Sonic Prime, and see what worked, and what didn't. Let's just get some of the basic stuff out of the way. First things first, Shadow's design here is just really, really good. The way he's animated, his facial expressions, the way he moves around, even the way he fights, it's all done extraordinarily well. If there's one thing that this show has proven it can do, it's action, and Shadow is no exception. Seriously, look at his fight with Sonic in Season 2 Episode 1 if you don't believe me. Not to mention that he uses the tornado attack and any reference to Sonic Heroes is an immediate win in my book. So if there's one thing evident from the get-go, it's that this show has no problem showing you just how strong Shadow really is, how he effortlessly deals with his enemies in a no-nonsense manner. And one really cool thing that I noticed was that the only times that Shadow gets witty or spouts any quips or one-liners is just when he's fighting Sonic. But when it's anyone else, he gets his game face on really showing that Shadow has his priorities in order. And complementing all of this is some seriously good voice acting from Ian Hanlon, genuinely the best voice in this show bar none. Make no mistake, Shadow, at least from a visual and combat perspective, is a badass. Not only that, but Shadow's also shown to be quite smart, like with the whole Nine situation. Shadow can clearly tell that there's something wrong with Nine and that his goals don't align with Sonic's, but Sonic is far too stubborn to see his logic, which unfortunately led to us having to sit through back-to-back -back episodes of this boring-ass fight in the third season. I mean, even back after they first met, Nine looks at the Phantom of Tails and claims that they're nothing alike, and Shadow gives this quick glance as though his thoughts about Nine are being confirmed, which I thought was a nice little touch. It's something the animators really didn't have to show, but they did. And on top of this, Shadow's also the one to figure out that Nine is the one who needs Sonic to complete his plan, hence why he tells Sonic to escape the fight. But there's more of Shadow's character to explore here beyond his intelligence, combat, and design. So let's take a deeper dive into some of the other, more questionable aspects. Now, one of the things that I see getting a lot of praise from Sonic fans is how Shadow interacts with Sonic, and for the most part, yeah, it's pretty good. With Shadow being the calmer, logical, and more reasoned individual, counteracting Sonic being the hyperactive little nuisance. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it, I'm not the biggest fan of how Sonic was written here. He had some good moments, but more often than not, it just reminded me of Sonic in the 2010s. And you all know how I feel about that. One thing that I always loved about the dynamic between Sonic and Shadow in games like Adventure 2 was this mutual respect. Shadow started by believing that he was superior to Sonic in every way, emphasized by the cinematography of their first meeting. But by the end of the story, they're on an even playing field with this newfound respect for each other. Lest we also forget their brilliant interactions in the last story segment. Yes, they had their differences, but they did grow to care about each other, with Shadow coming to Sonic's aid and even showing sadness when Sonic was killed in 06. 
Shadow always did, at least past their battle in Adventure 2, trust Sonic and believed that his decisions were good ones. But in Prime, the dynamic here feels less like a mutual respect and more like a mildly ticked off father with his child. With Sonic being annoying for the sake of it and Shadow just being disappointed or just confused by him, always questioning his motives and decisions. And rightly so, I might add. Clean as a whistle, sharp as a thistle, best in all Westminster. Yeah. Shut up, boy. I actually think that Shadow's responses to Sonic here are pretty good and that he is in the right, but it's a shame that this good characterization comes at the cost of Sonic's character. Shadow not trusting Sonic makes sense within the context of this show, but it kind of falls apart when you realize that this show is canon. Oh yeah, Ian Flynn himself confirmed that this show is canon and takes place sometime after Sonic Advance 3. So around about 2004-ish, before the events of Shadow the Hedgehog and 06. Except that many fans were quick to point out that this can't be true, due to the presence of Orbot and Cubot, who didn't make their first appearance as a duo until Colors in 2010. Oops. This means that Prime Shadow has his memories, confirmed through the Shadow the Hedgehog game. So we're not dealing with an amnesiac Shadow, which is something that people could have used to defend some of the writing issues with him in this show. This is a Shadow that is well aware of his past, which makes some of the interactions with Sonic here all the more confusing. Like how he just tries to fight with Sonic instead of trying to talk with him and understand him, something a Shadow from games like 06 would do. Shadow does eventually agree to team up at the beginning of the second season when he learns that he can't travel into different universes, but it feels so forced. Like Shadow has to work with Sonic against his own will, and again, this just doesn't really line up with the character from the games based on the point in time that this show takes place. Honestly, I think this show could have weirdly worked as a buddy cop style series between Sonic and Shadow, and that the writers just scrapped the idea that Shadow can't enter the different Shatter spaces, especially since that's a plot point that doesn't go anywhere. I honestly think that this plot point only exists because the writers had no idea what to do with Shadow and figured that this series would be over twice as fast if Shadow was able to travel with Sonic. The explanation behind this is that Shadow used Chaos Control just as the universe was being shattered, so he basically didn't get affected by the prism and that's why he can't travel into alternate universes and also why there's no alternate versions of him. But for some reason Sonic can travel into different universes and doesn't have alternate versions of himself so I don't even know what the rules are anymore. But then, the writers just get rid of Shadow's Chaos Emerald, I guess in an attempt to nerf him, but that just reinforces to me that they really didn't know what to do with the character. And I'll come back to this notion of the writers not knowing what to do with Shadow in just a bit. But I do like that beneath his brooding demeanor, you can tell that Shadow does ultimately care about Sonic. Showcased by his facial expression when Sonic supposedly dies towards the end of the final season. Hell, Shadow even carries him back to Green Hill in his arms in order to save his life, and at one point even compliments Sonic. But it would have been great to see more moments like this where Shadow shows that he does give a shit. This would have been more consistent with the character. The problem is the lack of care he shows when it comes to literally anybody else. And here lies what is quite possibly one of my biggest criticisms with how Shadow is written in this show. He doesn't talk to or even acknowledge anyone that isn't Sonic. It's understandable when it comes to these alternate universe versions, especially since Shadow can't travel into these different universes, but he doesn't care about anybody that isn't Sonic. All he keeps saying is how Sonic destroyed their reality and how he wants to restore their world, but nothing about the people inside the world. Imagine if, when he was shouting at Sonic about the world, he said something like, what about Rouge? What about our friends? Or something along those lines, you know, just something to show that he at least acknowledges anyone that isn't Sonic. Shadow not giving a shit about Knuckles, Big, Tails, and maybe even Amy, I, I guess I can potentially look past that? Not really, but I'm trying to give the show as much credit as possible. But him not acknowledging Rouge is practically sinful, especially given how close these two are in the games. And with there being no mention of Omega, you have to wonder about the state of Team Dark. These three had my favorite team dynamic when compared to any of the other teams. 
The interactions between Rouge and Shadow had been set up since their inception and were the fuel for some of the most emotionally charged scenes in the franchise, like on the beach in 06 after Shadow learns the truth about Omega. Remember how Rouge said that she would always be at his side? Well, I guess not, huh. Yes, I know the events of 06 were basically wiped, uh, sort of, but that doesn't change the content of these characters. They're still the same. Not to mention that it was also Rouge who sparked the formation of Team Dark, and Shadow never really showed any reluctance to being in this team because he genuinely enjoys it. But I guess we should brush that information off to one side like the writers so clearly have. I still don't understand why this show treated it as though Rouge was part of Sonic's close circle of friends, but not Shadow's. He at no point mentions or shows any concern for Rouge. What, did Shadow get amnesia again? And even if we go with the idea that this takes place after Advance 3, that means that Heroes has already happened and Shadow already did get along well with Rouge. Would it really have changed the story if they showed Shadow and Rouge hanging out at the beginning instead of Rouge being with Sonic? I guess the writers were trying to go for the Shadow the Hedgehog approach and make him an edgy loner, but that's something that I think goes against his character. I... <laughs> I can't believe what I'm about to say, but... Even Sonic Forces had Shadow at least talk to Rouge and Omega. It might not have been good dialogue, but at least he acknowledged their existence. Man, you know something is wrong when I compliment Sonic Forces. Also, Shadow, to my recollection in this show, never even considers those around him, like Knuckles, Rouge, or even Sonic, as friends. Hell, even when he talks to Sonic about them, he refers to them as your friends, not our friends. In fact, that sort of thing happens several times in the show. Look, I get wanting to make Shadow a bit more brooding and edgy, I really do, but one of my favourite aspects about him was that he always cared, at least deep down he did. From Maria, to Rouge, to Omega, to Sonic, and many more. It just sucks that he really doesn't show any kind of… well, anything towards any of the other characters. I know his dynamic with Sonic was the primary focus most of the time, but Shadow acts like he barely knows anyone who isn't Sonic. This really was exemplified at the beginning of the third season when Ghost Hill was collapsing in on itself. Shadow had to convince Sonic to leave Ghost Hill behind, which works well enough within his character seeing as he is the more rational and logical counterpart to Sonic, but imagine how much better it would have been if there was a shortcut to Shadow looking back with a slightly somber tone at the ghost of the characters especially at Rouge. That would have worked wonders to show that Shadow still ultimately cares about everyone, but has to make these tougher decisions because he knows Sonic won't make them. I'm not saying make Shadow all emotionally open or anything like that, because he is, at the core, a more introverted character. But even just some small things like that quick glance I mentioned could have really gone a long way in adding that depth to his character. Sonic, even at the end of Season 2, mockingly states how Shadow has no friends and just… what? Again, these are the game characters. Sonic knows that Shadow has friends, there's no way that he doesn't because he's seen him interact with the rest of Team Dark. Even if we go by the logic that this takes place after Advance 3, that, like I've said before, means that Heroes has already happened and Sonic has seen Shadow with Rouge and Omega. Man, I'm starting to question just how much research the writers actually did. And the writing kind of doubles down on this friendless notion, because at the end, everyone's gathering around for a picnic and Shadow is just… nowhere to be seen. Again, these issues could have been mostly forgivable given the good writing Shadow has in other aspects. But because this show is canon, I now have to judge this Shadow by the same standards as the Shadow from the games. But beyond all this, there's another major issue with Shadow in the show, which is his underutilization. If you've seen my Shadow character analysis, you'll know that one thing I touched upon was how underutilized the character had been, mainly after 06, and that any appearances past then were short-lived and felt like he was being thrown in for the sake of it. This was especially apparent in the 2010s where his inclusions felt like they were there for marketing purposes. He was put in just to get more people to tune in. And nothing screams this more to me than the fact that his most prominent appearances are in the early episodes of each season. Think about it. You watch the first or second episode, you see him being cool, and then you continue to watch the rest of the season waiting to see him again, only to realize that he's been shoved off to one side. 
and it's extra egregious considering just how much Shadow was used in the promotion of this show. I mean, Netflix put up the first episodes of season 2 and season 3 for free on YouTube to market the show, and guess what? They're the episodes with the most prominent appearances of Shadow, as well as some of the highest rated episodes. It really does feel like a marketing strategy, but at the very least, Shadow isn't as badly written as he was in the 2010s, but still, you get my point. This goes back to the criticism that I had with characters like Metal Sonic, where he feels like he's here for the sake of being here and doesn't really have that much of an impact on the overall plot. Shadow is basically just here to keep Sonic in line and act as exposition. In fact, I'm starting to think that they dumbed down Sonic in this show just to give Shadow any kind of purpose to be here. Hell, there's a scene where Shadow starts attacking the Chaos Council's ship, and it's actually pretty cool. And you think that maybe they'll move on to give Shadow his own B-plot where he infiltrates and takes on the Chaos Council, giving Sonic ample time to collect the shards, but no. Shadow just destroys some thrusters on the ship and then the Council just go, eh, ignore the damage, we got enough energy to get where we need to go, and then they just go, leaving Shadow behind. This, again, screams to the notion that they had no idea what to do with Shadow. They made him look cool, but he really didn't affect anything. The Chaos Council still got to their destination. This scene ultimately just felt like a waste of time because of this. Here's just a little tip for any aspiring writers out there. If you don't know what to do with a character, then don't put them in, or at the very least, don't make them out as having a larger role than they actually do. And what really sucks is that, like I said, Shadow's writing in this series is actually pretty solid, for the most part. But it's clear that the writers didn't really have a proper plan for the character and probably just included him because they knew he was popular, lending more and more to the idea that he's just in the show mostly for marketing reasons. And the absolute worst part of this is that the writers get rid of Shadow for most of the show and leave us with these guys. These poorly written one note side characters that really should have been the ones thrown to one side to make way for Shadow's character. I mean, in the third season, they literally stuck Shadow in a hole for most of it. What the actual shit? They have entire episodes going over the same long and boring fight, with the same robots getting smashed in the same ways over and over and thought that that was better entertainment than actually utilizing Shadow's character here. Actually, if this is the Shadow from the games, then why doesn't he just take off his inhibitor rings for a quick power boost like he did against Mephilus? If he did this, he probably could have soloed Nine's entire army- oh wait, that's why they didn't do it. Cause then, the series would be over too quickly. So instead, they just stick him in a hole for a while. Now, to be fair, most Shadow Media does forget about his inhibitor rings, but still, you get my point. If ever there was a time to break it out, this seems like a good time. At least, when he does claw his way out, he still kicks ass and drops the line. I am the ultimate life form. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! So overall, I'm kind of mixed about Prime Shadow. There is definitely a lot to love here, and there's no doubt that this is some of the best writing that we've had for Shadows since 06, but there are still some issues that do need to be addressed. He's an absolute badass, don't get me wrong, but they really ignored his more caring nature, something established since Adventure 2. I'm not saying that Shadow's character here is anywhere near as bad as how he was in games like Sonic Boom, but at least the Boom universe wasn't connected to the main canon, whereas this is. And I'm left wondering, why? Was it necessary to make this part of the canon? Would it really have been that bad if this was separate? Because honestly, I think the show not being canon would have been to its benefit. Especially when it comes to the character of Sonic, but I'll talk about him another time. But ultimately, this is a step in the right direction for Shadow, and now we'll look forward to the third movie to see if they can nail his character there. But, as always, only time will tell. Well, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy the video, then feel free to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn notifications on to keep up with all future content. If you want to go above and beyond in supporting the channel, then why not check out my Patreon? The link is in the description. And as always, a massive thank you to all my patrons. You guys are legends. And with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.